Today we are going to start the next chapter from our literature book that is A Day's Wait by Ernest Hemingway. I hope you like it. Before starting with the lesson, I would like to tell the theme of the story. In A Day's Wait by Ernest Hemingway, we have the theme of fear, courage, responsibility, isolation, confusion, acceptance and control. Now as we read the lesson, we will understand how these are getting focused and as I read the chapter I will keep explaining along with it all right he came into the room to shut the windows while we were still in bed and I saw he looked ill he was shivering his face was white and he walked slowly as though it ached to move. What's the matter, Scats? I have got a headache. You better go back to bed. No, I'm all right. You go to bed. I'll see you when I'm dressed. But when I came downstairs, he was dressed sitting by the fire, looking a very sick and miserable boy of nine years. When I put my hand on his forehead, I knew he had fever. You go up to bed, I said. You are sick. I'm all right, he said. So it happens that in the morning, when the father is still sleeping, Scats comes into his room to close the windows because he was feeling very, very cold. He was shivering and uh, this boy, Scats, is nine years old and he said that he had a headache. So father told him to go back to bed, but he said he was all right. Father still said that go back to your bed and rest. I'm coming, I'll dress up and come to you. But when father got ready, he saw that this boy was sitting downstairs by the fire and he was looking very miserable because he had really high fever. When the doctor came, he took the boy's temperature. What is it? I asked him. 102. Downstairs, the doctor left three different medicines in different colored capsules with instructions for giving them. One was to bring down the fever, another a purgative, the third to overcome an acid condition. The germs of influenza can only exist in an acid condition, he explained. He seemed to know all about influenza and said there was nothing to worry about if the fever did not go above 104 degrees. This was a light epidemic of flu and there was no danger if you avoided pneumonia. Back in the room, I wrote the boy's temperature down and made a note of the time to give the various capsules. Do you want me to read to you? All right, if you want to, said the boy. His father was very white and there were, his face was very white and there were dark areas under his eyes. He lay still in bed and seemed very detached from what was going on. I read aloud from Howard Pyle's book of pirates, but I could see he was not following what I was reading. So as you can see that the story is being told by the father. Alright, so uh, when the father saw that the child was sitting by the fireside and he had fever and he was looking very miserable, he called for the doctor. So when the doctor came and doctor took, he measured the temperature, uh, the doctor said that he, uh, Scats was having 102 fever and he prescribed three medicines. In fact, he gave three uh, medicines of three different colors. They were capsules. So uh, the three uh, medicines were one was for fever. The other was a purgative 
and the third was to overcome the acid condition you know this purgative is sort of antibiotic all right and uh, the third one was for acid condition and he also said that this was important to give the medicine for acid condition because influenza existed when a person was having acidity so these three medicines had to be given one to bring down the fever the other was an antibiotic which is also known as a purgative and the third was for acid condition and the doctor said that it was a light epidemic of flu and there was nothing to worry only care should should be taken that uh, the child should not uh, have uh, a high, more high fever and also that he should be kept warm and to avoid him having pneumonia because if uh, pneumonia uh, happens to a, p a person then the case becomes more serious so then uh, quickly father went back uh, to the who is this i i is father because father is telling the story he is narrating the story all right so father goes back to the son's room and uh, also he makes a chart of the temperature to see at what time how much temperature he has you know this is uh, you make a table so that you can see after how many hours of giving the medicine the fever came down and again it rose so this a table is made so father you know made this table and uh, then uh, he asked the child that whether he wanted to hear to a story so he was not very interested but he still uh, scads was not interested but still he said all right if you want to you can definitely read a story book for me so father took the book howard piles book of pirates howard piles book of pirates all right and he started reading from that story book how do you feel scads i asked him just the same so far he said I sat at the foot of the bed and read to myself while I waited for it to be time to give another capsule. It would have been natural for him to go to sleep, but when I looked up, he was looking at the foot of the bed, looking very strangely. Why don't you try to go to sleep? I'll wake you up for the medicine. I'd rather stay awake. After a while, he said to me, "You don't have to stay here with me, Papa." if it bothers you it doesn't bother me no i mean you don't have to stay if it's going to bother you i thought perhaps he was a little light headed and after giving him the prescribed capsule at 11 o'clock i went out for a while it was a bright cold day the ground covered with a sleet that had frozen so that it seemed as if all the bare trees the bushes the cut brush and all the grass and the bare ground had been varnished with ice i took the young irish setter for a little walk up the road and along a frozen creek but it was difficult to stand or walk on the glassy surface and the red dog slipped and slithered and fell twice hard once dropping by my gun and having it slide over the ice So when father was reading the story book he noticed that the child was not very interested. So after some time the father asked how Scads was feeling. So Scads said that he was feeling just the same there was not much difference. So father then uh, kept reading the book to himself because he saw that the child was not interested and told the child to go off to sleep. And because the medicine had to be given at 11 so father said that I'll wake you up. but he kept awake and he said i'd rather stay awake he wanted to stay awake and father was noticing that scads was looking at the foot of the bed very very strangely so this was bothering father a little but still he felt uh, that it was okay because he was not well so sometimes you know you tend to do little silly things so then after some time uh, the boy told his father that if it bothers you you could go out you don't have you the father didn't have to stay there so but the father said no sitting with you doesn't bother with bother me in fact you are sick and i'm here i'm your father so he said uh, then father also felt strange why the child was saying that way but still he thought that all right he has been given so many medicines maybe he is feeling a little light headed a little drowsy and uh, so that is why he was saying that way so at 11 o'clock he gave the prescribed medicines and then thought of going out for a 
while he thought that when if he would go out maybe the child fell asleep so when he went out he saw that it was a bright cold day and all the trees the bushes the grass everything was varnished with ice this was all covered with ice he took his dog that is the irish setter you can see in the picture here and uh, he took him for a walk and this red dog you know all through the ice he kept slipping so many times he was not able to walk and once he dropped his gun also and then they have to they had to slide over the ice we flushed a covey of quails under a high clay bank with overhanging brush and killed two as they went out of sight over the top of the bank some of the covey lit the trees but most of them scattered into brush piles and it was necessary to jump on the ice coated mounds of brush several times before they found flush coming out while you were poised unsteadily on the ice springy brush they made difficult shooting and killed two missed five and started back pleased to have found a covey close to the house and happy there were so many left to find on another day at the house they said the boy had refused to let anyone come into the room you can't come in he said you mustn't get what i have so when uh, the narrator Scat's father went out and everything was covered with ice he had taken his dog along with him he had also taken his gun because he was fond of uh shooting and hunting birds and small animals so you know they flushed a covey of quail this covey of quail are these small birds you can see in the picture and covey is uh, like a collection of these birds and you know they uh, were here and there on the tree and when he tried to kill few the others you know just flew away from the tree and they lit up the tree and then they discovered that there were so many birds so many quills over there and they were finally able to kill only two they killed two and they missed five of them because they flew away and uh, they uh, they were quite happy the father was quite happy that they had so many in there uh, the quills uh, the near the house so when they returned home because he had to take care of his son and uh, had already given a good nice walk to the dog he came home and he came to know from the other people in the house that scads had not let anyone come in and he had been saying that uh, you all stay out you don't have to come in because otherwise you will also you might also catch the fever and the influenza problem will also be in you will also be infected by this so this shows that the child was so bothered about his whole family he was a, a responsible kind of a boy he did not want anyone else to go through the same a uh, problem that he was suffering and moreover this i told you that this was a theme of isolation so right now he wants to stay alone he wants to say stay isolated moreover he was showing courage by staying alone and he was being responsible that uh, he was responsible that no one else should get infected I went up to him and found him exactly the position I had left him white faced but the top of his cheeks flushed by the fever staring still as he had stared at the foot of the bed I took his temperature what is it something like 100 I said it was 102 and 4 tenth it was 102 he said who said so the doctor Your temperature is all right I said it's nothing to worry about I don't worry he said but I, but I can't keep from thinking don't think I said just take it easy I'm taking it easy he said and looked straight ahead he was evidently holding tight on to himself about something take this with water do you think it will do any good of course it will So when the father came to know that Scads had not allowed anyone to come inside so he quickly went into his room and saw that uh, the child was exactly in the same position as he had left him uh, some time back and uh, he was again staring at the foot of his bed 
so the father was a little worried he took his temperature and uh, the child asked how much fever he had and he told him that it was not much it was something around 100 so the child said no i had heard in the morning the doctor had said that he uh, he had 102 fever so the father told him convinced him that there was nothing to worry and everything would be all right and to take it easy but still the child was looking straight he was holding tight onto his body was very worried and nervous about something so uh, this the father could not understand and uh, so father quickly took out the three medicines and gave the next dose to the child I sat down and opened the pirate book and commenced to read but I could see he was not following so I stopped so again father so again father sat down to read the book the story book but the child was not listening about what time do I do you think I'm going to die he asked what about how long will it be before I die you aren't going to die what's the matter with you oh yes I am I heard him say a hundred and two people don't die with a fever of 102 that's a silly way to talk I know they do at school in France the boys told me you can't live with 44 degrees I have a hundred and two he had been waiting to die all day ever since nine o'clock in the morning so when the father gave him the medicines and sat down to read the pirate book he again noticed that the child was not listening so just then the child asked the father father when do you think i'm going to die father was amazed surprised he said no what you're not going to die of 102 fever so the child said no i know we die of 102 when i was in france the one of the boys in the school told me that no one survives more than 44 degrees and i have crossed 44 and reached 202 i have quite high fever so just tell me when will i die so the father realized that oh god this child was tensed since morning that is since nine o'clock about the time that he would die you poor scads I said poor old scads it's like miles and kilometers you aren't going to die that's a different thermometer on that thermometer 37 is normal on this 98 are you sure absolutely I said it's like miles and kilometers you know like how many kilometers we make when we do 70 in a car oh he said but his gaze at the foot of his bed relaxed slowly the hold over himself relaxed too finally the next day it was very slack and he cried very easily at little things and worth that were of no importance so then the father realized that since morning this boy was holding so tight his body was looking at his feet because he was worried that he had such high fever and he could die any moment so when the father realized the father was so sorry that he didn't know that the father that the child was going through this problem so then the father explained that there are different units of measurement like in uh, when we are measuring kilometers we have we can even say uh, in the units of miles and then the kilometers in the same way we have two different thermometers one is the celsius or the centigrade uh, uh, thermometer centigrade thermometer and the other is the fahrenheit and the temperature in the two show differently you know in one it is the normal is 37 degree and the in the other the normal is 98 degree or 98.6 sometimes it is there so then the child realized his mistake that he had little knowledge and always you know we sh the little knowledge is always very dangerous if we come to know about anything we should go into its depth and you know find out all the information about it so here see uh, little knowledge that he had had worried him all throughout the day and uh, he had not slept he had not rested he was to uh, in total tension he had been waiting when he would die so this way little knowledge can always create problem so one should always you know keep 
oneself informed if you don't have proper knowledge then ask and try to find it out and so when the child when scads came to know about this he relaxed the uh, body also his eye gaze also relaxed the hold over his body also relaxed and then his body became very lazy and slack and he cried for little things you know when we are sick we get a little emotional and without importance without of without any reason we keep crying to gain importance and love of our parents so that is what the next day followed so this was the story i hope you all enjoyed let us see uh, regarding the title of the story why it is called a day's wait the title a day's wait refers to the time period in which a young boy learns the significant difference between centigrade and fahrenheit in the story scads is afflicted with a bad case of influenza so the title refers to the time period in which a young boy learns the importance of verified knowledge so this was the story i hope you all enjoyed uh, go through this If you come through any problem you are free to ask anytime please like share subscribe my channel thank you